all of our soon to be new citizens and all of your friends and family uh, who are here to support you uh, at this ceremony, which represents the end of your journey to American citizenship. Uh, we are honored today to have attorney Jim Hacking here as a guest speaker. I'll tell you a little bit more about Jim later. It's also a real treat uh, for me to have Mrs. Kelly Lowe with the uh, National Police Wives Association. She's here as our guest singer. And the program will begin with uh, Kelly singing God Bless America. <coughs> Attorney James Hackney. Jim is an immigration lawyer, so it's very fitting that he's here. He's practiced law in the St. Louis area since 1997. Uh, in addition to his immigration practice, uh, Jim has served as a volunteer attorney with Legal Services of Eastern Missouri. Uh, among other things, he <coughs> serves on the board of Missouri Immigrants and Refugee Advocates, an organization dedicated to fighting for the rights of immigrants and refugees. Uh, in 2010, Legal Services of Eastern Missouri awarded Jim the F. William McAlpin Pro Bono Award for his efforts advocating for low-income individuals in the St. Louis area. Jim has also taught as an adjunct professor at St. Louis University School of Law. An expert in the area of immigration law, Jim has been featured in the New York Times, the Washington Post, and on national public radio. He lives here in St. Louis with his wife, his three sons, and a daughter. It's really my pleasure to welcome Jim Hacking. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. That was the Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu. We have 25 people becoming U.S. citizens today, and I'm going to ask each of you to please close your eyes for a minute. To close your eyes for a minute. And think back to the moment when you decided that you were going to come to America. And I want you to think about what a dream that was, to come to America. And let's reflect a little bit on the steps that it took for each of you to get here. You can certainly open your eyes. <laughs> Think about the people who helped you. Did anybody here get sponsored by a family member to come to the United States? If you did, raise your hand if a family member sponsored you. Some people came as refugees. Some people came because of war in their home country. Some people came because they were sponsored by a business to come and stay in the United States. And other people came through the diversity visa lottery. There's many different ways to come to the United States, but 
Think of all of the steps collectively that our 25 citizens had to take to get to this spot today with us, to be here with Judge Mensa and our fellow new citizens. It truly is amazing. This is a, a ceremony of the federal government, but in reality, it's a, it's a spiritual thing that you guys have all joined together today. You came from many different places. You overcame many different struggles. Um, I'm sure there were people who doubted you. There were people who thought this would, they would never come. And I want you to think about the people who helped you, the people who supported you, the people who helped you get to this spot. Because it's not easy to become a U.S. citizen, as you all know. You first have to come and be admitted into the United States. And then you have to work really hard. You have to be a good person. And you have to move up that immigration ladder from here on a non-immigrant visa, to an immigrant visa, to a green card, to citizenship. And it is amazing that this has actually happened. When we think about all the steps and all the work that you had to do, it really is mind-boggling. You know, I believe that immigration is the civil rights issue of our time. We live in a time where immigrants are scapegoated and blamed and treated badly and treated unfairly. And so to see all of these beautiful shining faces in front of me today, coming here today, when you're an immigration lawyer, sometimes life is hard. It's not as hard as it is for my immigrant clients, but it gets depressing. So today, to be here with you, to see you grab that flag, and to take hold of that flag, and to join all of us in citizenship, to me, it's, it, it makes everything that I do worthwhile. In order to be, actually become a citizen, you had to learn English. You had to pass the naturalization test. You had to show that you've been a good person for the last five years. You had to go down to immigration and pass that test. I want to tell you about a client of mine who got naturalized last week. He was from Iraq. His name is Qasem. And I noticed right before he went in for his interview that he had written out all 100 questions of the naturalization exam phonetically in Arabic. So he didn't necessarily memorize it all in English. He memorized it all in Arabic, and it was amazing. That notebook is something else. I, I was blown away. I've never had a client do that before. I've had clients practice, obviously, but I never had someone go to that much effort. And that is how much he wanted to sit where you are now sitting. Now, becoming a U.S. citizen, with great power comes great responsibility. That comes from Spider-Man, another noted <laughs> philosopher, Stan Lee. So now that you're a citizen in a little bit, I really encourage you to get involved with the democratic process. Now that you are a naturalized citizen, you have all the rights of citizenship. You can serve on a jury, you can vote, you can get involved in the political process, you can, you can work on the national level, the local level, you can do everything that uh, natural born citizens can do. And I really encourage you to do that. And I just wanna end my talk by talking about the influence that immigrants have had here in St. Louis. There are areas of town that were really run down. South St. Louis was really getting run down and we had an influx of Bosnians who came to St. Louis and saved the city. Immigrants get the job done. Immigrants contribute to our society. I see immigrants every day who work and work and work, not just for themselves, <coughs> but for their children, because they want to build something better for their kids than they had before. So I get really upset when people try to make immigrants look bad. In my own life, I have been touched by the blessings of our nation's immigration laws. My legal assistant, who has been with me for nine years, originally came from Bosnia. Because of the war in Bosnia, she came here and she started working with me when she was 18. The guy who answers the phone for us and works at our front desk, he served the US military, he's from Iraq, he served as a translator for the U.S. military, and he's working with us. We have a woman from Lebanon who has an engineering degree who works with us. My, even my physical trainer, my, who helps me work out, she's a five foot nine Chinese lady, and she kicks my butt every day. Annabelle is her name. But first and foremost, the one person who's had the biggest impact on my life 
was an immigrant and her name is Amani and she's my wife. And um, her dad was a doctor and he came to the United States to work and he came ahead of uh, my wife and her mother. And he, he was busy and he didn't make all the, night, not the right steps to bring the rest of the family here right away. Well, Amani's mom was having none of that. She sold everything that she owned, all of her gold, everything that she owned, she sold every bit of it to come to America in 1979. And my wife was seven years old at the time. She landed in Chicago in the biggest blizzard that they'd had in 20 years. So to come from Egypt, where my wife is from, to Chicago and to see the, the snow was truly um, amazing. And so, you know, my wife, Amani, uh, she's a lawyer. We met in law school. I held the door open for her on the first day of law school. And a year and a half ago, she joined my practice. So now we're working together. And we love helping immigrants. It's the blessing of my life. The immigration, uh, falling into immigration as I have has been the greatest blessing for me. And I'm gonna end with you with my uncle Bert's favorite Irish blessing. And it goes like this. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, May God hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, for those inspiring and educational words. I um I know his wife, Amani. I didn't know I didn't know that story. Thank you for sharing that. Um well now, something that you all might be more interested in, I will entertain a motion by Jane Run, the Assistant United States Attorney and Naturalization Examiner. Jane. May it please the court, on behalf of the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, and in accordance with the Immigration and Nationality Act, it's my privilege to present for your consideration 25 petitioners for naturalization representing 15 countries. Each petitioner has shown to the satisfaction of the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security that they have resided within the United States during the period required by law, and that during such period they have been and still are persons of good moral character, attached to the principles of the Constitution, and well disposed to the good order and happiness of the United States of America. It would be on the basis of our interviews and investigations that I move that you accept them to take an oath of allegiance and to grant them United States citizenship. I will gladly grant that motion. Your Honor, uh, before you administer the oath, may I please read the name of the petitioners present? Yes, please do. As I call your name, could you please stand and tell us what you do, uh, where you're from and what you do now that you're in the United States? Alex Shee? I'm from, I'm from China. I'm currently an uh, engineering student. My Tiboda Ten Chavez. Hello, my name is May Ten Chavez. I am uh, from the Philippines. I am a physical therapist in Popper Bluff, Missouri. Thank you. Bendang Dashi. Hi, I'm from India and I work as a store manager. Ali. Kamel Durhan. Ali Gohan. Uh, I'm a college guidance counselor at Gateway Science Academy. Thank you very much. Nchenja Ferrara. Vincenza Ferrara. I'm stay home. <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> Harris Rizvanovich. My name is Harris Rizvanovich. I'm boy of Lansdale Lent and Jackson with Boy Guy and Truck Guy. I have no bus. Thank you. Victor Manuel Vergara Riteja. Hello, my name is Victor Vergara and I work for a pharmaceutical company. Ai Lin Dang Marsa. My name is Ailin Dang Marsa. 
and uh, I'm work part time at UCB Spa, and the rest of the time I'm stay home and take care of my kids and my family. Thank you. Thank you. Bujara, Natravetti, Vasudevan. Thank you. Kaina Maya Sanyasi. Thank you. Herbito Montoya Montoya. Uh, my name is Roberto Montoya. I'm from Mexico. Yeah. And I am a warehouse manager. John Paul Wheatley. Hello, uh, my name is John Paul Wheatley from the United Kingdom and I'm a small business owner. Bim Bahadur Ray. Uh, my name is Jim Rai and I'm from Wuhan. I'm working in food poison gas factory. Thank you. Tatiana Carbonova. Hello, my name is Tanya. I'm from Ukraine and I'm born from Delta Medical Supply. Rehe Arquines Tenjavis. Good afternoon, my name is Reggie. I'm from the Philippines and I work as a medical records analyst and lead it pop up there. Thank you. Rasama Takovic. My name is Rasama Takovic. I am from Bosnia and Herzegovina. I came over here in 1997. My husband and four children and I'm retired now. Thank you. Savita Shrivastava. I'm Savita Shrivastava. I was born in India and lived several years. Hajika Yazurevich. My name is Hamkia Yasharevich, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Honor Ismail Aras. Hello, my name is Honor Abbas. I'm a computer programmer for Worldwide Freight Management. I came from Iraqi Kurdistan. Edwin Batista Dolores. Hello, oh, my name is Edwin Dolores Leyes from Philippines. Anna Yatula Fez. Yes. I'm an Ayatollah Fez from Afghanistan. Okay. Uh, Working at the Pfizer Factory. Thank you. Amelia Esparza. Amelia Esparza from Mexico. As homeland in Mexico. Thank you. Miss Paris Captain. My name is Paris Atsipan, I'm from Iraq, I'm a student and at Medical Billing and Forty. Thank you. Christian Antonio Nevera. Hi, my name is Christian Nevera. I'm from the Philippines and I'm a product manager from the Science. Thank you. Shen Tuen Long. My name is Chen Long and I'm still a student. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing a little bit about yourselves with all of us. And now I think this is the moment we're all waiting for. Would our petitioners please rise? <coughs> rise as you're able. <laughs> Just raise your right hand and repeat after me. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince potentate, state or sovereignty, of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen, that I will support and defend 
The Constitution and laws of the United States of America against all enemies foreign and domestic that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. <coughs> that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by law. That I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by law. That I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by law. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. Congratulations, ladies and Gentlemen, my fellow Americans, <laughs> congratulations. congratulations to each of you on becoming citizens of the United States of America. So this is really exciting. I, I'm not the only judge who loves presiding over naturalization ceremonies, but I think that it means most to me, of course, I'm speaking only for myself, uh, but because I'm also a naturalized citizen. Over 25 years ago, I became a naturalized citizen of this country. So it's especially meaningful to me to have had the privilege and the honor of administering the oath to all of you. Uh, I was born in West Africa, in Liberia. But my story actually started here in the United States. Uh, my great-grandmother was an American. She was born in Knightsdale, North Carolina, uh, just about 10 years after uh, slavery ended in this country. Uh, she met and married my great-grandfather, who was also an immigrant. He was a free British slave from Jamaica, and he immigrated to the United States uh, in the late 1800s to get an education. There was a, a, a historically black school in North Carolina near where my grandmother grew up, and they got married, and believe it or not, they went to Liberia as Baptist missionaries, and they helped to establish a Baptist mission school right across from where my mother grew up. They had several children, including my grandfather, who spent his entire life in Liberia. In 1980, there was a military coup in Liberia, and the military took over the government. My grandfather, who had been in the government for many decades, was arrested. Uh, we never saw him again. And many friends and family members were rounded up, and um, some were killed. My parents and my sisters and I came to America seeking political asylum, and very fortunately for us, we were eventually granted asylum <laughs> and many years later, uh, we became naturalized citizens. So I, I share my story to highlight a couple of things. Uh, first and foremost, America is and always has been a country made up of immigrants. If you go back far enough in the family tree of every American, except maybe Native Americans, everyone came to America from someplace else. Even my great-grandmother, even though she was an American, her ancestors 
were brought here in bondage from someplace in Africa, we don't know where, but they came from someplace else and they brought their traditions and their cultures with them. Everyone who came here voluntarily or involuntarily brought a bit of the culture and traditions that they left behind. And over time, all of those different ethnic, cultural, and religious backgrounds have blended together into one American tradition. There's no doubt about it. This rich diversity of culture, religions, races, and traditions pose very serious challenges for this country. But at the same time, I believe that that diversity is the very thing, the essence of what makes America great. So I encourage all of you to look around at the faces of the people in this room, the people sitting next to you, and remember that all of us, we are all the faces of America. The other thing I'd like to use my story to highlight is that America is now and always has been a land of opportunity. Opportunity to pursue an education is what prompted my great grandfather to come to America. My parents chose America as a place to flee to, to seek refuge because of all of the opportunities that they knew would be available for us. And as immigrants, they did. They worked hard every day, not for themselves, but so that I could stand here in front of you as a federal judge and administer the oath of citizenship to you. So just as my path to citizenship ended 25 years ago, today your journey towards citizenship has ended. But as Jim uh, so eloquently put it, your lives as citizens of this country have just begun. And he covered some of the very important duties that come along with that privilege. And now that you are Americans, I too urge you to pursue the opportunities, the many opportunities that are available to you in this country. I know people do come here for many different reasons. Some come here to work or to study, to increase wealth, to worship God or not, according to one's wishes, to escape war or oppression. Whatever your reasons are, you are part of us now. You're one of us. Um, and so I do hope that you will enjoy the rights and exercise the power that you now have as citizens. The rights that you have do include the right to have freedom of speech and the right to freely pursue your dreams. We all know America is not a perfect nation. No country is. But I believe America was founded on perfect ideals. Those ideals promise equality <coughs> and justice under the law. They promise a government of the people by the people, for the people. Our Constitution does not guarantee happiness, but it does guarantee that you will be free to pursue happiness, whatever that might look like for you. So America's freedoms, America's promises of freedom and democracy will never be realized without the participation of all of its citizens, including all of you now. So now that you're citizens, don't take these rights that you have for granted. I also encourage you to be active participants. First, by staying informed, not just from one legitimate news source, but many. Stay informed about the issues that matter to you and that matter to your children and your families. And then use the information to exercise your right to vote, not just in presidential elections, but in local elections too. Those are so important. Make sure your voice is heard by participating as fully as you can. Sometimes that means petitioning your representatives at the local, state, and national level to redress wrongs that you've perceived, either for yourself or for people in your community. Make sure your voice is heard by supporting our system of justice, which is unparalleled in the world, and serve as jurors when you're called upon by our courts to do so. So one last thing, and then I'll sit down, I do want you to take away uh, with you is, is this. You, you just took a very important oath. And part of that oath required you to renounce allegiance and fidelity to any other sovereign. And that is an important oath and one that you will be expected to comply with. But understand that by taking that oath, you are not being asked 
to leave your culture and your traditions at the door of your American citizenship. I am personally inviting you to bring those cultures and your traditions and religions, bring them with you, and more importantly, share them with other Americans, because we're all in it together now. So welcome home, ladies and gentlemen, and once again, congratulations on becoming citizens of the United States. At this time, I would ask for everyone to stand while uh, Rachel Marshall leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the National Anthem. Who say can you see So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the Right here. So it's important that we exit the rows so that we can have this space here. To 